And I'm like, okay, there's two ways you can go about this. Because one is, like, first off, do you have a track record of any podcast yet? Do you have, mm-hmm. do you have a consistency? If you do, I don't care what the audience is. So many people get mm-hmm. so focused on just the numbers alone that they're like, I'm not brand worthy yet, or I can't get a brand sponsorship, or I can't monetize it yet because I got to still work on getting more audience. And to some degree, you always have to work on getting more audience. But that doesn't mean that you don't have value now with the audience that you have. What you don't have is an understanding of how your audience that you do have is valuable to some brand that's out there. So there's a brand that sees value in your audience, even though you still think it's too small. But here's the real silver lining on the whole thing. The whole thing has changed. Within the past 24 months, the new trend is that marketers are now looking for small, unique, niche audiences. Got well, the rocks glass. Yeah, man. It's, uh, this, this guy actually takes Grey Goose bottles cuts them and then f- flames them to make them into actual glasses. That's kind of dope idea. Uh, but w- I don't have Grey Goose in there. What's in there right now is Ciroc. <laughs> okay. Ciroc boys in the building tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Well, Mario, man, it's good to see you. I know you're working with Alex and stuff, but for me, man, it's this is, a, this is an honor again to chat you up and I know you always bring it I, like this is this is this is who you are, right? You're Mr. Content, you're Mr. Creator, yeah. And bro. Uh, man, this is fun, especially for a hundredth episode. Like to see where we started and you know come back now. I think this is like it's crazy. It's just early this year, but hundredth episode, man. Like, thank you again for doing this, man. Like for the second time man, around, we really appreciate it. It's an and honor. I, just gotta, and a privilege, I, I gotta man. say that it's yeah. an honor. I mean, a hundredth episode. Come on. Yo, that's mag. That's a lot of consistency right there. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a lot of consistency. There's, you know, we when we did we did a pug, podcast club uh, um, culture conference, and we're going to be coming out in 2022 with with a podcast culture tour. So be on the check mm-hmm. for this. But but when we did it in Clubhouse during COVID um, as a conference for all the podcasters out there, we did a survey to really find mm-hmm. out like what do these podcasters really need, and what stage of the development are they really in. Man, so many people were starting out, and so many people have under 50 episodes. So many people. But the ones that had over 100, so few, man. Because it, it takes a lot of consistency, commitment, patience, and um, a willingness to want to ride out the journey for the long haul. No. So yeah. congrats, congrats, congrats to y'all, man. Let's go ahead and have that toast, man. Hundred episodes, hundred episodes. Yes, sir. Yes, hundred episodes, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. Here's to another hundred. Here's to another hundred. Another hundred. Another you hundred. know, Mario. Another one. You know, Mario. They say Alex gave me this crazy stat. He was saying that um, the average podcast doesn't make it past ten episodes. Ten. Ten episodes, man. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it all day. It, it's too easy to start. Yeah. It's too easy to start, man. You know, and this is why, you know, when people start coming to me talking about how do I monetize my podcast? And I'm like, okay, there's, co- there's two ways you can go about this. Because one is, like, first off, do you have a track record of any podcast yet? Do you have a, mm-hmm. do you have a consistency? If you do, I don't care what the audience is. So many people get mm-hmm. so focused on just the numbers alone that they're like, I'm not brand worthy yet, or I can't get a brand sponsorship, or I can't monetize it yet because I got to still work on getting more audience. And to some degree, you always have to work on getting more audience. But that doesn't mean that you don't have value now with the audience that you have. What you don't have is an understanding of how your audience that you do have is valuable to some brand that's out there. So there is a brand that sees value in your audience, even though you still think it's too small. But here's the real silver lining on the whole thing. The whole thing has changed. Within the past 24 months, the new trend is that marketers are now looking for small, unique, niche audiences. They're actually looking for small audiences. 
Mm -hmm. But if you don't speak that language, if you're not talking to PR agencies, if you're not meeting with marketing firms, if you're not talking to uh, clients directly in their marketing department or social media or events or corporate social responsibility, all these departments I'm talking to on a regular basis to really make sure that I know what I'm getting in terms of my own brand sponsorships. But then that's also educating me because I have a course that educates others. So I'm getting access to information really quick and on the ready. But a lot of people don't know that marketers have shifted their attention away from just big audiences. And they're starting to look for smaller, more unique, focused audiences. And that means you actually have a higher potential now more than ever to get brand mm -hmm. deals. And the reason why that is, is because you get seven, the brand gets seven times the amount of engagement on their investment. So the ROI mm -hmm. is much higher when a brand does a deal with a smaller audience. No, that's a fact. And I want to ask you something because we, we, you know, we're approaching some different sponsors and I feel yeah. that uh, what a lot of brands and a lot of podcasts get to is a, the first meeting where they have a discovery call and, you know, they, they're talking about what they meet you align with and where they can see things going. Right. Once you're at that point, because I feel like this is this is where we are a lot of times, and, and we yeah. don't don't make it past this this hump. Is we're in the discovery call. It goes was all right, cool. We'll we'll, we'll um, circle back. We really like what you guys are doing, and from that point, the the things start to dissipate. From that point, where do you yeah. where do you see um, entrepreneurs, podcasters, YouTubers, content creators, event managers? Where do you see them going right, and where do you see them going wrong? That's a great question. I mean, I think, I think people are going right in the pitch process when they are identifying a brand that seems to have the best alignment with your audience. So when you know who your audience is and what products and services your audience needs, that becomes your immediate target list. A lot of times we focus on like our product and we think that's what the brand should be aligning with. The brand is really aligning with your audience. So what does your audience need? What tools, what devices, what software, what, what, what clothing, what food, what drinks? What does your audience need or what do they like? Those are the target brands you go after first. So you're going after the right brand. So you're doing that right because you know your audience and you know who you're going after. Then you get the meeting and you're asking for the discovery call. You're doing that right. A lot of people go wrong at this point because they will send the pitch with pricing. Big red flag. You never send a pitch with pricing. I don't care. And you never send it with the three tiers. Like you can get this package, this package, or this package. All of those are red flags because it tells the marketer on the other side, you don't know the latest in how to pitch me. And you don't even know what's important to me. You're just throwing your ideas at me thinking that I'm going to buy into one of these. Mm -hmm. so, that's a, so that's a flaw. Now, if you're not doing that and you're having the discovery calls and you're having a great conversation, but it seems to dissipate from there. My question is, what are you asking in the discovery call? So let's talk this through. When you have a discovery call, what do you guys normally do? How do you, what, what happens in the call? What takes place? You're giving, well, you're telling them about your idea or about the podcast. Like walk me through as if I'm a brand. Yeah. So what we do is <clears throat> we go in a line with brands that actually fit in with the hustle over everything podcast. So entrepreneurs who are within like that, they're starting out. So people who are actually like using the products that the, br that the brand is all about. So, for example, we had uh, a meeting with Calendly, let's say. Mm, and Calendly smart. is like a scheduling tool, right? Yep, and yep. entrepreneurs right now, this is something you use to really organize your schedule, your time. We're like, all right, perfect mix. So yep. our goal was um, to go in there. And Alex spotted this is to say, hey, they're actually making a lot of content online about how to be productive, how to really have good meetings and et cetera. We're like, hey, we talk about this on our podcast. Let's actually go to them and actually say, let's create the content for you and integrate it within our podcast. That was our angle. So we did our research and we saw, hey, this is actually going to fit in because we're naturally doing this and we're talking about it on the pod, the synergy there. We have a conversation with it. Uh, we send them our, our breakdown of what we've done, what we've done with some brands, for example, like Bel Air earlier this year. And after that, once we send that to them, it just went dead. So we don't know yeah. what happened in that conversation. So yep. we just want to know, like, what is it when we have those conversations are some critical components that 
they want to see? Is it numbers? Because if it's numbers, small podcasters might not have the numbers that will get these people excited. So how do you flip that conversation to get them to actually be interested beyond the numbers when you provide them with such a synergistic idea like that to move on forward? So, so the first thing is, <clears throat> this is a great question. The first thing is when you're in the pitch mode and in that pitch phase, the problem that many people make is that they're pitching their idea, but they're not mm -hmm. uncovering the client's problems. So you're pitching before problems. Mm -hmm. You're not problem solving, you're pitching. So people mm -hmm. pitch before problem solving. So you have this great idea. You know that you're talking about them. You know that there's synergy there. Like this is going to make mad sense. There's no way they're not going to see the connection. We talk about it. We know our people need it, blah, blah. Here's the thing. They may not even need that help. They may not even need that help. If you asked them this, though, in the discovery call, if you would have said, if you would have asked these specific questions, and this is where the game changing happens, what are your top three priorities right now? Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you. We're trying to reach XYZ audience, or we need more people to stop using the free version. We need more people to use the premium version. So they're going to give Got you it. clues as to now how you can help solve problems. When you, say to, when you say to them, go back to them, and I want you to go back to them and be like, you know, I, 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 we really would like to have a different discovery call with you. I, I think we may have gotten ahead of ourselves. I think we, we were so excited about pitching you an idea that we didn't take the time to really figure out what your priorities are. We'd like mm -hmm. to revisit a conversation where we could ask you a series of questions where we could really understand your priorities so that we can go mm -hmm. back and meet with our team to show you how we can be a problem solver for you. So that's going to get them thinking like, oh, okay, that's completely different. They're not pitching me a concept. They're trying to find out what's, what they can, where, where our pain is mm -hmm. and how to solve that pain. So you're going to ask them questions like, what are your top priorities? What keeps you up at night? What's the, what's the best product that generates the best m money for your business? When you start asking them things that are very important to their bottom line, they automatically, number one, respect you because you're like, damn, they're asking me different questions. This hits differently. And, and so your value goes up. But number two, they're telling you everything you need to know in order to come back to them with a customized solution as to what you're going to now offer them to help them with their problems. Yeah, it, it makes us reflect now and actually thinks like, damn, like we could have done this better. We could have done that better. <laughs> it's um, always the hindsight. Okay. Because, you know, you know, Mario, like getting these meetings is hard, right? There's a lot right. of follow ups and then getting them to decide, OK, let's meet with these hustle over everything, guys. Or let's meet with this podcast or see what they have to say. You have such a small window to really make a good impression. And if you don't, it's it's even harder to come back at it. So I think this is what a lot of podcasters and content creators need to understand is that one shot you have, especially with a large organization, is so, so critical that you really got to get it right the first time to really move the needle on to the next one and just say, hey, we got this right. Let's figure out the next steps to really see how we can execute on this. Yeah, and, and I think the problem with the pitch process for a lot of people is that they're trying to get that one shot. They feel the pressure of getting that one shot right because they're trying mm -hmm. to actually get you to they're, you're trying to pitch the idea that you want them to buy into. And that's mm -hmm. actually the wrong goal. Mm -hmm. The first goal for your first thing, the first thing you're pitching them for is a discovery call. Yep. Not the idea. You're pitching them just to get them on the phone for 12 minutes so that you can ask them questions that's going to make you look different. And then they're going to mm -hmm. be like, damn, they're asking me some deep questions. And then you're going to say, next week, I'm going to come back to you with a draft of some ideas that my team and I are going to put together based off of your answers. Mm -hmm. Now they're getting a proposal from you. You called it draft on purpose. You're getting a proposal from you. That is a draft that's going to show them how you listened. And now you're reiterating their answers, their problems into your solution. You said you wanted to reach more entrepreneurs of this particular age and, um, to use your tool to actually uh, use the premium version of that. What we decided that we were going to do is we're going to come up with a custom ad read and we are going to talk not about the free part of the service. We're not going to even mention anything about it being free. We're going to talk about the three top premium benefits of going premium. 
and how that how that advances their productivity, how that advances their revenue, how that gets them to better opportunities. And you told us that mobile is more important than desktop. So we're going to be pushing people to the mobile app. We're going to do that in our stories. We're going to do that when we talk about it on the show. And we're going to do that when we do any uh, posting or any videos that we do. You're going to see us using Calendly on our mobile or whatever it is. And you said you would like to see more integrations, more integration with maybe, uh, maybe one of the things that they said is we want to get more retail to use us for scheduling. So they use our thing to schedule booking appointments and they want to get more coaches maybe to use it. Okay, we decided to do this ad for coaches, this ad for retail, and they're all going to hit the different audiences with the pain points that you're solving for them in these messages. Now, when you come back to them with that, they may not go for everything, but what they will respect is the fact that you gave them a custom solution the fact that you listen to their pain points, and now even with your smaller audience, they know that you're going to reach people with a more defined and clear message. Mm -hmm. When you have a small audience, the only way that you can actually convince a brand, one of the only ways that you can actually, let me say that again. When you have a small audience, one of the only ways you can really convince a brand to do business with you is to prove your worth, your credibility, not your numbers. What's your credibility, Owen? Oh, what's your credibility, Alex? Are both of you entrepreneurs? Are both of you content creators? Do you guys kick it with other people that are in that same space? Do you guys have experience? And what, and what experience do you have? What credentials do you have? Oh, you've done 100 episodes? That's an award number one. We're very consistent. Do you know, uh, XYZ brand, most podcasters never make it past 10 episodes. We are already in the top percentile. And by the way, we've done brand deals with, with we've done brand deals with this brand or that brand. And by the way, this is why I say it's always smart to even do brand deals for free with initial brands just to get them ex just to get onto your podcast or in your content because the new the new brands that you're talking to have no idea that they didn't pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're thinking about that actually. We're, um, we we, we uh, got approved for some affiliate deals, and we're like, mm, is it worth it? You know. Um, but one thing I always also hear a lot about as well is being the UGC for brands, right? Yeah. Where, you know, brands, they don't have, instead of being, instead of having to hire a model, you can be the model for them or that user generated content that creates ads for that brand. You know, um, have you tried this yourself? Um, what experience would you suggest? Um, us take when it comes to, you know, taking that route. So, so the, so let me make sure I'm clear on what you're saying. You're saying that, are you saying as an influencer or are you saying as somebody that's going to generate content for the brand on behalf of the brand? Someone that's the second option. Someone's going to generate content on behalf of the brand. Yeah. So, so here's how I would position that you got to position. Everything has to be positioned with what's the value in it for them. Everything. Mm -hmm. So you already mm -hmm. know what happens if you get a brand deal. You already know what you're going to do with the money or how it's going to help you get more marketing or how it's going to help you invest into the podcast or invest in your company or get you to buy new equipment. You already know what the outcome will be if you get a brand deal from somebody, a financial brand deal. But what we got to be focused on is what can we give them? What's the value to them? So what I would be asking them is, you know, every company, here's how I'd present it. Every company these days at your level has to be a media company. Being mm -hmm. a media company is a lot of work because you got to be on the ground. You got to know what the trends are. You got to be in the conversations. You got to be in the rooms. You got to be in the group chats. Mm -hmm. We're in all of those. All we do is surround ourselves with people all day that are in the group chats. We're going to the meetups. We're over at this spot. We're in this event. We're going to this thing. We're doing that thing. We're posting here. We're talking about it on our podcast there. We are on that ground level. Let us create content for you that's authentic to you, but speaks authentically to the audience you're trying to reach. And they'll believe it more because it's coming from us, not from you. Yeah, yeah. So then you say, so what's the important messages that you're not getting out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's not resonating? What, are, what don't they know about you? What do they need to know? 
And so those questions will start getting you some open-ended answers, and that'll start cluing you in as to, oh, man, all right, I know exactly what content we need to create for them. Got yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah. And, the other and, thing know, too is the other thing too is I, I didn't get to see what you pitched, so I don't know what your one sheet <laughs> what, what your one sheeter looks like, right? And a lot of people will put a one sheeter together, and they'll have their demographics, they'll have their reach, they'll have maybe what the show is about, what the topics are, things of that mm-hmm. nature, which is all fine, which is all great. But if you do, if you are starting, or if you do have smaller numbers, then what you have to do in your pitch is you have to aggregate other things that you're going to do in addition to the numbers you're presenting. So what I mean by that is you're presenting your podcast, but don't you use your social media to promote your podcast? Yep. And don't both of, of you also do that? Yep. Right? 100%. So so we're going to also not only talk about our podcast numbers, we're also going to throw in our numbers personally, and even those could still be small. It's fine. We're trying to we're trying to aggregate everything. So we'll put those numbers in because we're gonna we're gonna go to the brand and we're gonna say this to the brand. Uh, hey, uh, Calendly, after talking to you about your needs and really hearing you out, what we're gonna do is we put together a holistic package. Part of this package gets you heard on the podcast. So you're gonna be heard on the podcast, and if it's a video podcast, we're also gonna show some clips or some some short bits of Calendly. Uh, we may even show how we book our guests using mm-hmm. Calendly um, as a part of you know our show feature, right? So you're going to show it, mm-hmm. but you're going to talk about it. But then we're also, uh, Calendly, we're going to be doing you know uh, five promotions on social per our accounts. So that's both our single accounts and the podcast accounts. So that's 15 pieces of content that's also going to go out with you being branded as a sponsor. We're going to do that mm-hmm. three times. To- we're going to do that once a week for the, f- for the month that we do a deal. So now those 15 turn into 60 posts. So now you're getting 60 posts. You're getting X amount of weeks of the podcast where we're talking about it and shooting video. And and we are going to create a piece of content specifically for you to just use so that you can put it out on your own social that you can use however you see fit to be able to to get more people to use your product. We're going to create personalized content for you outside of our podcast. So that's three different things mm-hmm. that you're now offering them in one cohesive package. Yeah, that, that's what we did actually. It's funny enough. We had, we made, we made that uh, pitch to a, to a brand where we put all of our stats together. We uh, put our LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Smart. show them examples. Show them examples oh man, y'all killed do. it. That sounds yeah. like y'all killed it. Yeah. You know what I think, Mark? We just need to do more of it. We need like so we have a small sample size. I think it, we might be like hitting on the right track. That might be maybe we can send it to you. You can check it out. See, hey, like what's some let of the improvements review you can make? Let, let me you review, review it. it, right? Absolutely, like classes man. in session, right? Yeah, let me let me right? let me let me audit that joint right away because I'll, I'll be exactly. able exactly. But I still think I still think the reason why you may not have gotten that call back initially isn't the numbers just yet. I still think it's the beginning of that discovery call. Yeah. I still think mm. if now that you have the knowledge and the information to know that we have to do the discovery call, asking questions about them, not really pitching the idea we have for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a major lesson right there. It's, it's a, like because it's, it, it changes everything. It yeah. really mm-hmm. changes their it really changes their respect value for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. everybody's pitching them their idea. Yeah. You're the only one that came in and was like, "We got ideas for days." That's not the problem. We got ideas. We know that we got some alignment. We've done research, but we need to dig deeper. We need to know what's really plaguing you, what's really the problems that you're facing so that we can hear how we can come up with a solution that really, you know, knocks it out of the park. That's a different approach. And when you do that, they're more inclined to actually read and look at your pitch because you spent the time getting information from them that you're now Mm -hmm. customizing into the pitch. 100%. Hundred percent. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think it's your. I don't think it's your batting average. I just think if you did the discovery call again and you incorporate kind of like this process into your discovery call, and you continue to group all your assets together, you might want to think about who can you pay as an influencer that could also bring promotion, mm-hmm. and you can leverage their numbers. So who do you know has got a hundred k following that you could be like, hey. 
can we break you off 250 bucks if you could drop a few mentions uh, on, about about our podcast with this brand being associated to it? We want to include mm-hmm. you in our deck. So now your numbers just went, you know, your numbers just went higher. And hold there's on, one what? other little. So, so, <laughs> oh, man, hold on. so you said you reach out to an influencer and say, hey, we're about to pitch Mercedes Benz, right? Yeah. yeah. Mercedes. And we want you to you pay you 250 to post us on your story, on your, on your, on your feed to uh, yep. include that in our reach. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. And then you're going to ask them for the insights. Like they got to agree. Like I need you to do X amount, whatever that is, stories, yeah. reels, posts, whatever that is. And then I got to get the, you got to, you got to give me screenshots of the insights. Cause if, they, if they're really powerful, then you're going to want to use them. Hmm. But, but in this the pitch a- process, you're going to use that number of those followers. So yeah. imagine, so, so here's why, and here's where the smart money comes. The brands know something that y'all may not know. The brands understand that they have to pay for paid ads and organic ads. And I know Alex knows this because he's in the ads business, right? But it's different (laughs) when you are thinking about sponsorship. You don't think that brands will actually respect you for taking some of their money and applying Mm -hmm. it to paid. They don't care how you apply their money. They want the results. Mm Mm-hmm. So what you could really do, being that you, Alex, actually have a little bit more knowledge than most, you could actually put together projections that you know personally. Hey, man, oh, uh, Owen, if we spend $1,000 promoting this, uh, promoting, um, this uh, podcast for this episode, I know we can get X reach just based off of what I know about programming ads. Okay. So when we actually pitch XYZ brand, Let's make sure we're pitching enough money because we're going to break off a thousand of that and actually put that into marketing. But we're going to tell them on the front end, here's what we're going to hit. Mm-hmm. So you already know your projections are saying, I'm going to reach 200,000. All right, well, how do you get to that? Well, I got to spend $1,500 in ads to get there. All right, well, tell them in the deck, you're going to hit 200,000. And then when they ask you, well, how are you going to get that number? Y'all don't, I don't really see how you're going to get that number. And you're going to be like, oh, a combination of paid and organic. Mm-hmm. And we got some influencers that work with us. Mm-hmm. You know, what you said that's interesting, Mario, right? A lot of like small content creators, they're thinking we got to do this alone, right? If I'm like a podcaster, let's say Alex and I, we're thinking we got to do this alone. But one big right. thing that you said is that you can leverage other influencers and make it part of the deal to really boost up what it is that you're saying and give that reach. Yeah. But you're still, because the end goal is to get the deal. The end goal is to get that sponsorship. And there's nothing wrong with leveraging other people's audiences as part of your deal to really build up your cadence to get to that position where you actually have an audience on yourself to be in that major platform where you're actually getting the deal alone and actually going there. So this is like one thing a lot of small influencers don't get is doing and teaming up with other people is not a bad thing you don't got to do it alone it's not at all because you you go in stronger and the and the Mm -hmm. and what we're forgetting is what we're really trying to do is start a relationship exactly we're like focused on the 25k because we want to get that money because we need it for our business we need it for our lives i get all of that Mm -hmm. but also what we're doing is we're trying to start a relationship so Mm -hmm. you got to get in the door and then you got to try to prove yourself valuable so that you can keep going back to that door and you can keep Facts. expanding that relationship. Mm-hmm. Facts. You know, that, it's crazy. Nah. Like event, no, nobody thinks anything different when they do events. Like <laughs> when you do an event, why they got panelists? They got to yeah. have names. They're leveraging somebody else's audience. Some of those panelists you need to pay because that's mm-hmm. their deal. Some panelists want to be in front of the audience that you're presenting they'll come for free. The brand don't Mm -hmm. care. You're telling the brand, I got these panelists for this event. You're telling we got Mario Armstrong on the panel. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah. All right. So the one thing that uh, it's a red flag to me, you know, and we're working towards wrapping up, you know, this is a short pod to, you know, celebrate and we have have a ton of people on on the the docket um, is busting that down. You know, so yeah, let's uh, going back to the example with Mercedes Benz, 
let's say we holler at, you know, um, our, our boys, um, she's senior gun boy who has about 50 K on Instagram. Right. And yeah, all right, I'm like, yeah, all right, yo, post this. We'll give you 300 and just to get this deal with Mercedes. Right. So yeah. now we break them in on the deal with Mercedes. How do you break that down? Cause that's going to feel like a very messy middle <laughs> right there. Once that deal comes through, if it comes through, yeah. what? How do you break it down to Mercedes? No, to, to, you... to Senior Gun Boy, to, to the to the influence oh. that we're working with. Oh, I mean, I mean, look, I, I think I think you look, you don't want to build it up to you. Don't, you probably don't want to sell it in advance, like how big what you're trying to go for. I would ask before you have a deal. Hey, man, you really seem to be in the audience that, you know, we're in. Or mm -hmm. you have a connection to an audience that we have a connection to. If we were to go out and get some brand deals for the podcast, could could you would you be able to take some easy money for just doing some some posts and and we would kick you like two hundred bucks or two hundred fifty dollars per post that you would do? Mm -hmm. I would just start the conversation now before you have a situation, because what I found is that when you get into the situations people start getting greedy. <laughs> oh, yeah. you got, oh, you're going after Mercedes? Oh, yeah, no, nah, man, that's going to be a G. You're like, wait, fam, we don't even know if we're getting a deal. Like, we don't even know if we're mm. going to close this deal. <laughs> like, hold on. <laughs> so, no, and, and you, so, so, so before all of that, get them excited about the fact that all they got to do is a really simple thing and they can make two or $300 on the regular. Mm-hmm. So it, would man. that be a, would that be what, what would you need in order to promote our podcast? That's how you gonna post it. That's how you gonna, what would you need in order to promote our podcast? Mm. And they'd be like, man, you know, I need like two, three hundred bucks to, you know, I'll do a couple posts, you know, and try to stretch them. Be like, I'll do one post. Oh, come on, man. Like, can you do a post and a reel or a post and a story? Like stretch them, <laughs> you know, kind of push it a little bit. And then they'd be like, mm -hmm. all right, I'll do X, Y, Z. And then you say, okay, cool. What we got to do is now what we got to do is we got to go out and try to get some brand deals so that we can actually make money to pay you. Mm -hmm. oh, so I what we're going to do is we're going to go out and try to pitch these brands. And as if we get brand deals coming in, then we're going to give you, you know, what to what to kind of put, you know, and, you know, mm -hmm. podcast brought to you by Calend Calendly or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mario, shifting gears a little bit um, yep. before like close to wrapping up, right? You know, you've been really major on Clubhouse, right? You've been popping, you've been consistent, you've built an audience on that. Share with us, like, how that has impacted, like, first, your personal brand, and then second, your personal business. Man, Clubhouse is legit. <laughs> Fam, it's still it's still hanging in there tough. It's still mm -hmm. tough. Um, Clubhouse, because Clubhouse is increasingly making discovery on the app easier for people. Here's why. It's an audio app, number one. Doesn't require you mm -hmm. to be on video. That's a big saver for a lot of people. You can be on it anytime, plus just about from anywhere and be able to jump into a room. Number two, the topic that's, that's being put up there carries a lot of weight. When you go onto Clubhouse and you're scrolling what they call the hallway, imagine walking into a convention center and looking at the agenda for the day and you're seeing a whole list of different topics. Some of those topics are definitely going to appeal to you. And you're like, man, I'm going to room 303. All right, man, I'm going over here to SEO for like room 101. And then you, you break and you go to your rooms. It's the same thing with Clubhouse. All these topics are going to resonate with somebody. So they don't even have to know about me, but they could really be interested in the topic. And that brings them to the room. Then they find out about me. And if I'm holding it down and if I'm giving good value and if I'm giving good information, then they stick around and they follow me and they start to really become a part of that family. Mm hmm now, this, the, the second piece beyond the title is who can you do a room with? It's the greatest collaboration yeah. effort, period. Like this is the time where you actually collaborate with other people that have like-sized audiences that you have or people that have larger audiences that are just down to help you grow. And you come up with a topic that they can all jump in on. Now you got five or six people in one room showing up with all their followings being pinged and being notified about this topic. So it's the easiest way to really leverage collaboration. So get smart with collaboration and connecting with people. And then they got the clubs aspect where you can actually join clubs. I would say from a business, from a personal brand, it has enabled several people, including myself, to do a couple of things. 
Number one, mm -hmm. cement our leadership authority in specific areas. Mm -hmm. If you keep talking about a specific area, the, your, your facade is going to come up if you start showing up weak. Yeah. But if you keep talking about a specific area and every time you keep bringing it and you got something new to say or something different to bring to that, your, your street cred goes up tenfold. Mm -hmm. So cementing your leadership authority is big. Number two, the discovery is very easy for people to follow you. And not only that, following you on Clubhouse, what I found is every time I go in Clubhouse rooms and I kill it, my Instagram goes through the roof. Yeah. Because they're reading my bio and then they're clicking on my IG. So you talk about building my brand, how that's helping me. Now I'm building mm -hmm. my, my social media footprint. I also see that the, there's a ability to like donate now, you know, and I know your profile has the donation feature. Like, has that also like helped you out? Like, are, are you making money off Clubhouse? Share it more did about initially that. when it first came out, because I think a lot of yeah. people were trying to figure out the novelty of it. But not mm -hmm. so much now. Not so. It's not. You know. I think you still have to be very proactive about that if you're going to tell people to do it. Like mm -hmm. they just don't inherently do it. Um, you know. Ask anybody that's on Twitch, that's rocking DJ sets, and they got their Venmo, their PayPal, and their Cash App up. They know. They still will tell you, Yeah, man. I got to remind these fools to hit me with a tip. It's sitting right there on the screen, but I got to remind them. Yo, don't forget tip the DJ tonight. <laughs> so. Everybody still has to have that call to action and still remember to kind of like call that out there. So I haven't seen that really grow as much. I will say if you are a content creator or if you are making that a part of your programming, like if you're a comedian mm -hmm. and you're going to come up and you're going to do sets and you're asking people to pay to be a part of the set or like, you know, have a quote unquote entrance fee to get in to help this comedian. Mm -hmm. Sure. That could probably be making people money but I, but not without the call to action or not without right. the integration into the actual content itself yeah and then i think the last thing about clubhouse man is that it's really creating partnerships outside of clubhouse mm -hmm. you know i'm getting we're, we're we're building a 2022 tour called the podcast culture house why are we doing that because i met a bunch of people that i rock with in clubhouse early on and we did a podcast culture conference and we were able to work together to see how that relationship worked. Now I'm like, yo, Sean and I are absolutely taking this thing on the road. And we got dreams of doing a tour bus. We got dreams of doing a thing at South by Southwest. We got things wow. about brands are going to be involved. So we're collaborating with people that we've met on the app in real life to do real business deals. Man, we'd love to be a part of that, man. You know what I mean? Like, we, we're there. big fans That's of Sean. Done. We're there, you know, yeah. like no, distance is an have issue, all on man. Y'all got a hundred we'll episodes. Be... Y'all there. Y'all going to have a, y'all going to have a speaking spot. Y'all ain't just going to be there. You ain't going to be in the this crowd. This ain't amateur gonna hour, have a speaking man. Spot. Yo, this good. ain't amateur hour. Once you meet a hundred, like you're actually, a, this is professional podcasting now. You know what I'm saying? So Next we'll level, there, baby. Bro. I want y'all to do Next a live, level. I want y'all to do a live, uh, a live uh, episode. From we the will. We're trying to, we're, we're planning to do one here in Toronto, like next spring. So we're just uh, gearing up, seeing how these COVID restrictions are going to like right. hold up. But mm -hmm. uh, no, it's in the plans, Mario, for sure. Yeah. Most definitely. When Most you definitely. all do that, man, that's going to blow, fam. That's going to blow. Most definitely. It's going to be. Even if you can do it right now, intimately, brands mm -hmm. are looking. So anybody in the event space, anybody mm -hmm. that's got a podcast or content or a book or any reason to bring people together, brunch, masterminds, coaches, meetups, any of that. Anytime you can physically bring people together, brands should be involved. You're leaving money on the table if you're not getting brands involved. You're leaving money on the table if you're not getting brands involved. So here's the thing. Right now with restrictions and all the changes, you might have to do something intimate. Brands still want to be a part of that. Make your intimate thing also virtual so that other people can still experience it even if they can't physically be there, but still do the physical thing and do it with the, you know, COVID procedures in place. Don't think mm -hmm. that just because like, oh man, we got to keep it under 20 people that a brand won't be interested. Brands are looking to actually be a part of just those types of things. Mm. That's interesting. All right, man, <laughs> now I'm saying that I have questions just to follow up. So, uh, all right, one last question. I'm wondering when we're done. So with that, all right. um, we're actually doing a party for our 100th episode, right? 
So now, th- this feels like a, a um, counteracts what we were initially seeing with the discovery call because we already are approaching brands with the idea of the party, right? Or the event, mm-hmm. right? So how would you say uh, pivot to have that discovery call and work towards the event you're about to throw? You still got to tie it back to what's the value for them. Mm-hmm. You keep, you're, you're going at it because you should be, but you're going at it with, yo, we made it to 100 episodes. We're going to do this all-out party. You all have got to be a part of this. So mm-hmm. it's exciting. Sounds great. But you still haven't told me why I need to spend money with you in order to be a part of this thing. So what you would need to go back to them and say is, if, especially if you've already presented it. If you've already presented the idea, say like, hey, look, you know, I know we presented to you about the 100th episode party, but we need to really have a call with you to find out more about your priorities so that when we're thinking about the things we're going to do for you at the party, they're really hitting your solu- the really solutions for your problems. Mm-hmm. That's the only twist you need to do at this point. And if you haven't talked to anyone yet and you're about to pitch them on the idea of the 100th episode, you can, you can say we are doing a celebration for the 100th episode. We think, based off our, our research, that you and I would be in great alignment. But I need to talk to you on the phone to find out more about your priorities, your challenges, and what's important to you to see if our 100th episode celebration can deliver some custom solutions for your problems. Genius. Genius. So many Honest. gems. <laughs> so many gems in this. Man, um, what's next for you, Mario? And where can people find you? Uh, man, what's next is this podcast culture tour. What's next is a show that I'm really excited to be um, producing. It's going to be the new season for the Never Settle show. So make sure y'all check out Never Settle Network on YouTube until we get our distribution deal, which has can't be yet to be announced. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I would say the third thing is, man, if y'all don't get some of these gems and hit me up on my text club, I don't know what else to tell y'all. Y'all better hit my text club, 917-810-2347. 917-810-2347. So when I pop up in Canada and I text you and you're like, yo, I'm in Canada. Come on out. I'm hanging out. <laughs> 100th episode party. We here. Where you at? Uh, mm-hmm. You won't miss out on anything that I'm doing live or anytime I'm showing up in your city. Amazing. That's, that's what's up, man. Amazing. Everything will be linked down below. So make sure you all tap in. All right. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the hustle is what you can't control. Let me say that one more time. The hustle is what you can control. So control your grind Grind. and control your life. I'm Alex. And I'm Owen. Y'all go out there and get it. Cheers, baby. Let's go. 100th episode, baby. That's the 100th, man. Bang, bang. Lahaim. Let's get it.